Okay, what is sin? Want to try? What is sin? Uh, Shining, what is sin? Okay, transgression of God's law. How do you know that? Transgression, how do you know that? Let's turn to 1 John 3, 4. All right, 1 John 3, 4. We must have the biblical definition, huh? 1 John 3, 4. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4, shall we read together? <clears throat> One, two reading. Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. All right, so very accurate translation, um, um, definition. Transgression of... Cannot see, right? Transgression of the law. Transgression of the law. All right, that is one. What is the next one? Now, must have the right understanding because otherwise when you sin, you say, no, I've not sinned. What's another one? Who else? Who can try? Uh, let me see. Uh, Ellen, what's another definition of sin from the Bible? Coming short of the glory of God. From where? Very good. Okay. Coming short of the glory of God. Now, if you turn to your BBK books, um, Romans 3.23, or let's turn to our Bibles, Romans 3.23. Shall we turn there? <clears throat> okay, Romans 3.23. Shall we read together? One, two, reading. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? So the Bible defines for us, one, transgression, two, short of the glory of God. Come short of the glory. So transgression and coming short. That is what the Bible tells us sin is. Now, um, transgress. What's the meaning of transgress? So you must think, every time I sin, what does it mean? I transgress. Who can say what is transgress? Okay, students in school. Uh, Justin, what is transgress? Break. Okay, break means... Transgress means you go beyond. Understand? Okay, so the law says this, or this is the limit, you go beyond. So you cross over, right? You transgress. You cross over. So is... Go beyond. The limit. Or go beyond. Go beyond. Okay, go beyond. Go beyond. Now, what is short? Come short of the glory of God. So some say shortcoming. One is transgress. One is cross over. Cross over. One is being cross over. <laughs> huh? The meet. So it's short. One is cross over. One is short. So when you think of sin, God says, one is crossover, one is short. Now, I want to ask you, crossover what? Crossover, just now we say, transgression of the law. Huh? You didn't say the law. Whose law? Very obvious. Use another color. Huh? Transgression is, is going beyond what God says. God's law. Always remember that. What I tell you is sin. Does it matter? It does not. When God says it is sin, it matters. It's not what man said is sin. Hey, before I forget, uh, it doesn't mean the country say drive at 50 and say, oh, that is not my problem. Right? The Bible tells us, obey the laws of the government. Right? So, so you're obeying God. So God's law, very important, it must be God's law because we are going to study the Ten Commandments in this chapter. Why do we study the Ten Commandments? Because the Ten Commandments are God's law. Hmm? So if you want to know not what, is, what is sin and I must not transgress, you must know God's law. So Christians who, cannot, who do not know the Ten Commandments live very dangerously. Understand that? Okay? So God's law. Now, so that is it. It means this. 
It means, sin means what God tells me to do. Oh, sorry, sorry. What, calls me, what God tells me not to do, I do. Okay? Sin means God says, don't do this. Then I do it. That is sin. As long as God says, don't do it, and you do it, it's sin. It does not matter what you think. It does not matter what you think. It does not matter what the world tells you. Homosexuality is not sin. It does not matter. The whole country, the whole world say it is not sin. It does not matter. God say it is sin, it is sin. Okay? And you do it, you have sin. Does not matter what man says. Hmm? Man says white lies are not sin. Grey lies are not sin. It does not matter. God says it's sin. The moment God says don't lie, you lie, whatever kind of lie, you have sin. Now, the main thing I want to emphasize here is Christians must come to a point, we just study what is the Word of God. What is, what is the Bible? It's the Word of God, right? So, once the Bible is the Word of God, then anything that God says, no matter how uncomfortable I feel, no matter what I have experienced in my life, no matter what I've grown up in, no matter what people have been telling me since I was growing up, my aunties, my uncles, my parents, I see how they live, it does not matter. Once you are Christian, God says, this is, don't do this, you do it, you have sinned. For example, God says, um, like today I'm going to cover, if I have time. God says, wives should be keepers at home, right? I didn't make that, I didn't make that law. But God says, wives keep us at home. The meaning of keep us at home literally means house worker. <laughs> uh, it has to house and do things. The, the sphere of the wife's role is in the home. But today, Christians say, no, I want to work. I have children, I will work. I am a woman first. Does it matter what the world tells you? Does it matter your parents tell you, hey, hello, daughter, hello, son. Oh, hello, daughter, not son. Hello, daughter. You have your doctorate degree. What you mean after I pay hundreds of thousands of dollars, after you get married, you have children, you don't want to work? You better work. Does it matter? God's law. Now, unless I teach you things that are Joseph's law, then you ignore it. But if it is from the word of God, please know. You cross over, you have sin. It's not because the church say it. It's not because pastor say it. Because it's in the word. Okay? So have that attitude. You read something, you say, but, but all my life, you know, all my life, this is not what I have learned. Then you say, if I do, if I do it, I have sinned. Okay? Now, this is it. Now, what about this? Short. This is, God says, don't do, I do. What is short? What is short? And what is the meaning of, we always read, right? You go, you go and preach the gospel, you tell them, all men have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. All men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Eh? And then after that, okay, who goes for evangelism? Uh, let me try. Okay, Eugene. Deacon Eugene. So you go and preach, then you bring Phoebe, say, then you say, Phoebe, tell them, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All right? Then the, the person asks, oh, Phoebe, what does that mean? Then Phoebe looks at daddy. What does it mean? <laughs> all right? So he said, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. What does it mean? Come short of the glory of God. What does it mean? Why is sin called come short of the glory of God? Because standard is perfection and we cannot, we don't meet that. God's standard, all right? God set the standard. So we fall short of God's standard. Understand that? One is God said, don't do. You do. Sin is also God says, do. You don't do. Or you don't do up to God's standard. Okay? So clear or not? Now, but why? Uh, why God glory? Because for the Christian, you must understand that. Why, why is glory involved? Uh, who have I not asked? Uh? Uh, Ichung. Where's Ichung? Okay, Ichung. Why is it short of the glory of God? God says, don't do. We do, is sin. God says, do, and we don't do, is sin. Why, but why is glory of God involved? Mm, because, it, because we are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of God. 
man is supposed to bring glory to God, correct? We are made in the image of God. Now, which part we must have? God is a spirit. Let's try. God is a all allowed. God is a spirit. Infinite, eternal, and unchangeable in his being, wisdom, power, holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. This is God. Can we be omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent? No, correct? But this is God made man in the image of God means this is what we are supposed to reflect. Okay? Holiness, justice, goodness, and truth. We must do all this. We must have all this. And God has a standard. Now, when God created man, man is supposed to be like that. And when men fall, they do not meet the standard. They do not bring glory to God. Now, Christians, please understand this. When God says, live like that, live like that, do this, hmm? and you do not, you fall short of bringing glory to God. When families do not obey God's model, you do not bring glory to God. Understand? That's why, in fact, you read in Titus, God says, if the wife would not be what the wife should be, then she will cause the word of God to be blasphemed. You know it's blasphemed? People will blaspheme God's word. So, a Christian not living according to how God wants us to live, do not, is not being what he is supposed to be to bring glory to God. Okay? So what is sin? Every time you read God's word, God say, don't do. You want to do or you don't agree and you do it, it is sin. When you do your devotion at home, you read something or you hear a message and then God hits you. Say, God said, stop doing that. Don't do that anymore. But you rationalize or you disagree and you still want to do it. That's sin. Or God says, now, seek ye first the kingdom of God. God says, put me first. God said, in your family, put me first. God says, this is how you keep the Lord's day. God says, do this. Then you read, you say, I will do some of it, but I will not obey completely. You also sin. Okay? So please don't think that I do a bit, I be a bit of all this, I'm fine. Now, but the ask question is this, can you ever meet God's standard? Ben, Benedict, eh, Benjamin, we can never meet God's standard. All right? But does it mean that we don't do it? We keep doing it to the best of our ability with God's help. Okay? Once you choose not to, that is sin. Okay? So now, so understand sin. Huh? You do your devotion. God says, don't do this. You do. It's called transgression. God says, live like that. You don't. It's called short of the glory of God. Okay? Now, so understand sin very clearly. Why is God's word before this chapter? Because the standard and the law is God's law. Okay? So the Bible is God's word. So please obey. Now let's turn our BBK books to page 40. Page 40. So I've explained page 39 and 40. Okay, so now. Um, page 40 at the bottom now how did sin come into this world so sin is transgression of the law and short of the glory of God all right so how did it come in when we studied about man bottom of page 40 bottom of page 40 the new book I'm sorry I didn't write down I can't remember but wait but you turn to the chapter on sin okay now when we study about man what is the origin of sin Okay, let me ask someone. Clara, what's the origin of sin, Clara? Started when Adam Adam fell. Started when Adam fell. But what about Eve? What about Eve? Eve disobeyed God, right? So, 
The origin of sin is here. Anyone disagree? Okay, Ben was saying something, yes. Origin of sin is Lucifer. Okay, so depends what you mean by origin of sin. Huh? Origin of sin in man, Adam and Eve. Right? Adam disobeyed. Origin of sin in the universe is Satan. Let's turn to, if you want, you can write down your BBK book. Let's turn to Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Okay, Isaiah 14. Shall we read verses 12 to 14? Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, reading. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the, nation, of the north. <clears throat> okay, and then I will, I will, I will, so on. Okay, in verse 14, I will ascend uh, above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Okay, so Lucifer had all those I will. That is where God says, you have sinned, cast out of heaven. Okay? Now, I ask you, what's wrong with that? Lucifer was a very, very beautiful, very powerful, very unique angel. All right, very special angel. What's wrong with him saying all this? He's so wonderful. What's wrong? Why is it sin? Based on what we learn, why is it sin? Okay, I'll try someone behind. Okay, Hannah, why, why did Lucifer sin? Pride. pride. Why is pride sin? He wanted, he wanted to be like God. What's wrong with wanting to be like God? Why is it sin? Takes away the glory from God. Okay. Which commandment did he break? Okay, next one. Samantha, which commandment did he break? I'm assuming you know the commandments, which you know. Which one? Say, look at verse, verse, verse 14. I will be like the Most High. Which commandment? Say again. The first and the second. Correct. First and second. Now, what's the first? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. He is saying, I want to be equal with God, if not better than God. Understand? But God says, no other gods before me, in front of me, other than me. But he wants to be at least equal with God. Another God. Okay? So he transgressed. Transgress God's law, right? God said, no other gods. He said, I want to be the other God. So he transgressed. He transgressed. First sin. Now, then man, man, now, when Adam sinned, what did he do? Or rather, what did God say was sin? Okay, no time, I just say. Now, God says that, you will not eat of this tree, right? You cannot eat of this tree. Which fruit was that? Okay, this is a test. Uh, Benedict, which fruit was that tree? How come you don't know? Huh? The Bible doesn't say. Alright? So it's not apple tree and that kind of thing, right? People say, man got Adam's apple, so oh, that was the apple he ate, then oop, the thing grew. Before. It's got Adam's apple to remind man of he ate of apple. No. Alright? God didn't specify what fruit tree. God simply say, you shall not eat of this tree. Now, then they did. They ate of that tree. Correct? What is the definition of sin? God says, don't do and you do. Correct? God says don't, and they did. Is it anything wrong with eating from a tree? God said eat of every tree, but this one. Is there something special about that tree? 
Wow, that tree, uh, actually when God created that tree, that particular fruit is a very dangerous fruit. So they better not eat. Is it like that? There's nothing inherently special about that tree. Understand that. What is inherently wrong is God says that this one you don't touch. The lesson is this, my friends. When God says, it keeps coming back to this, God is the law. Hmm? Young person especially. Huh? God is the law. God is the lawgiver. When God says, and you don't understand, and you say, but nothing wrong. What? Adam could go, all the tree also, tree. God created the tree, what? right? Ayah, never mind, la. eat, la. it's okay. Look the same as the other, the other fruits. Smells better than durian fruit. So it should be all right, right? It does not matter what you think. The moment God says, this is my word, you do it, it is sin. If God says don't. Understand? Now what I'm trying to emphasize is this. Through this fall, God is trying to teach men this. It does not matter again what man thinks, what man says, what you think. The moment I say it, I put it in my word, that is law. Please obey. Can you be so humble? Because today, many Christians question God's word. I don't think that is what God means. No, I don't agree with God. I read books that says, you know, in this area, I don't think it was very wise of God. Can you imagine theologians say, you know, in this instance, I have to say that God was not very wise in giving this commandment. Especially in the area of men submit, a woman submit, and husband love. You see, God not so wise. So please, whatever God says, do not question. In the army, they have a saying. Who, who went to the army? All right, someone, someone will go to the army soon. In the army, they have a saying. Mine is, so we are running, and then they say, this is the command, do this. The moment they shout something, you have to do. You run, 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 jump, then you jump. Run, 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 drop, then you have to drop. All right? But there's nothing, nothing. Why jump? Nothing on the road. Jump, you know? oh, have to jump. Then we are always are taught to say, Eugene, say what? Mine is not to ask why. Mine is to do or die. <laughs> Understand that? Then we are trained. They say whatever they say we do. That is God's law. Mine is not to ask why. Why are God? Why, why women must submit her? Why women must, mothers must stay at home? Why, uh, why, why the white lies are wrong? Uh? Why if I lie but the end is good, why is it not good? Mine is not to ask why. Adam and Eve did not obey God's command. Although, Now let me ask you, did God say, don't kill? Don't steal? Don't commit adultery? Now those are very clear sin, right? But God says, don't eat of this tree. Does it sound very unreasonable? It may sound very unreasonable, but the lesson is, God says, then we trust that we must obey. That's it. Can you come to that stage? Why I need you to come to that stage? Because this understanding is lost. Today, Christians speak and choose what I obey. I know better for my family. I know better for my life. Mary, unbeliever, what's wrong? I have people who challenge. Pastor, I disagree with you that Christians should not marry unbelievers. But it's so clear in the Bible, marry only in the Lord. Only in the Lord. How else do you want to explain that? But I disagree. Lah, because, you know, I married my wife. She was not a believer at that time. It does not matter what you do. It does not matter what result came out of it. All it matters is God says no. Can you come to that stage? Please do not be, the, be part of the popular Christianity. It depends. There's no depends, okay? Change your thinking. Now, that is sin. This is how we become sinners, you know? Just because God said don't eat and they ate, we are all sinners today. It is very serious. Disobeying God's word is very serious. Yes, serious consequences. Now, look further down. Now, so how did we become sinners? We covered a bit of that. Page 41, Romans 5, 12. Let's, shall we read together? Romans 5, 12. Shall we read together? Wherefore... As by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for all have sinned. Now, Adam was the representative of the entire human race. So look here. We actually covered this. So I'll go through very quickly. When Adam sinned. Now, by one man is referring to Adam, huh? not Eve. God's command was to Adam. God was, Adam was Eve's wife. 
Adam is the representative of mankind. He was the head of the marriage, of the home. Okay? So God went after Adam. So remember that. But Eve also sinned. Eve also has to face the consequence. It's not Adam sinned, Adam was going to hell. Eve won't go to hell. All right? But God will hold him responsible. Now, that is why wives must submit to the husband. Understand? God will go after the husband. And you sin, God will also say, Husband, why did you not stop your wife? Adam did not stop Eve. Okay? So now, from there, all of us became sinners because of the representative principle. Okay? All of us sinners. We, we read all those verses in Romans already. Now, here, so babies born. The moment two human beings give birth to a baby, it is a sinner. Okay? The baby come out, it's a sinner. Because the Bible says so. There are some Christians who say, no, no, babies are not sinners. But the Bible says that babies are sinners. Now, how do you know? Let's turn to page 41, the second, the second paragraph. Shall we read Psalm 51, verse 1? Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. So David reveals to us, God revealed to us through David, that when David was in his mother's stomach, David was already a sinner. I was conceived in sin. Right from the beginning in my mother's womb, I was conceived in sin. Okay? I was conceived. He's not saying my mother had uh, committed adultery and I'm, I'm an illegitimate child. He's not saying that. He said, I'm born in the stomach. I was a sinner already. Now, this is called the imputed sin. Imputed. Adam, sin is imputed onto all mankind. You are an Australian citizen, you give birth to your baby, your baby is an Australian, correct? Imputed citizenship. Hmm? Headship principle. An analogy. Imputed. Babies imputed. Now, as the child grows, when the child... Now, so there are two kinds of sin in that sense. Imputed, the moment you're born, you're a sinner. Then, when the child makes a choice to sin, it comes to understanding and it chooses to sin. Alright, that is the personal sin. Personal sin. Okay? So, you can't say that... Um, wow, so unfair. But the child will sin. Eugene, does children sin? Do you remember when was the first sin Phoebe committed? Can you remember? <laughs> Were you quite shocked that at that age they know how to lie or know how to... I think the first time <laughs> Where do you learn that from? We didn't teach you that. You can lock the baby in a room without television, without music, without anything, and parents only do the right thing. The child will steal. When something breaks, Elisha will go, that's it, right? That's it, for. Alright, so they will sin. They will be responsible for their own sin. Okay, so remember that. Now, then I ask you, who, who deceived Adam and Eve? Satan, correct? When we sin, can we blame Satan? Can Adam and Eve blame Satan? They did blame Satan, correct? They did blame Satan. The serpent deceived me, right? So can you blame Satan? What do you think? Uh, Keziah, can you blame Satan? We studied, right? Sin is always our lust. We sin. All right? Satan can come and tempt you. God can allow Satan to tempt you. But when you sin, let no man say, I'm tempted of God to sin. Okay? So, how do we know that when we sin, we cannot blame Satan for sure. Benedict, hey Benjamin, how do you know? You blame Satan? Yeah, Benjamin. Right path is to obey. Now, during the millennium, is Satan around? This is the millennium, right? 1,000 years. Before the millennium, Satan was cast into the bottomless pit, correct? During the millennium, we know there will be sinners, correct? There are sinners. The Bible tells us so. 
Christ will rule on earth. Why did he need to rule? Because there were sinners. And Christ will bless the believers and Christ will um, punish the unbelievers even on earth. Believers will have rain, unbelievers will have no rain. The Bible tells us that. So they're unbelievers. Satan is locked up here. Right? Satan is locked up here. So without Satan, man still sin. Okay? So I just want you to be very clear. When you sin in your heart, you know, God, I sin. Please forgive me. I'm the one who went beyond. I'm the one who would not obey. Sin is disobeying and sin is also not obeying. Okay? Now, let us turn to uh, page 41, right? Page 41. Okay, so now we have five minutes and then I will help you to memorize the Ten Commandments. Next week, we will start the Ten Commandments. So I say again, why are we studying the Ten Commandments? Many, many churches say, don't study Ten Commandments. It's a waste of time. Ten Commandments are for the Old Testament. But Ten Commandments are God's law. Sin is breaking of God's law or not obeying God's law. So Ten Commandments, very quickly. There are some new people, so I have to go through this. Turn your Bibles to, quickly, turn your Bibles to, eh, turn your BBK books to page 43, eh, 40, 42. Okay, so, um, the new people, next week I will ask you, huh? you know who you are. Now, thou, number one is, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number one, commandment number one, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Very easy, I'm number one. No other gods before me, zero gods before me. What's before one? Zero. Alright, so that's how I remember. What's number one? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Number two. Thou sh number two, let's read together. Thou shalt not make any great graven image. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. Number two, question, um, number two. So I always draw this, huh? Number two. If two is like that, right? So you will not make any graven image. So this is like a hook. Number two, it's like a hook. Don't engrave. Then there's another part. Don't kneel down, huh? don't bow down before them right, don't bow you bow, don't serve okay, hand, so don't bow, don't serve, don't make, don't bow don't serve, don't engrave, okay full stop, so this I remember now, number three thou, let's read, verse three thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, it's about the name how I remember I don't know how you remember I remember the name three, Trinity the name of God, okay so, it says, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Anyone have a better way? You should just remember. Okay, three. Trinity. Four. Verse four, let's read together. Thou shalt not... Eh, no. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Four. One month typically have four Sundays. That's how I remember it. So, four is about the Sabbath. Thou shalt remember and keep. Two parts. Remember, keep. Number five. Verse 5, thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. Alright, 5. Family starts with F, so 5. I have 5 family members. Alright, so father, mother. Now, number 6. Verse 6, thou shalt not kill. Chinese always say, die, die, die. Eh? 6, eh? Kill. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not murder. Number 7. What is 7? Thou shalt not commit adultery. 7. Someone taught me this. Seven, you put it down, it's a bed. <laughs> Alright, thou shalt not commit adultery. Seven, put it down, become a bed. Eight, thou shalt not steal. Uh, eight, uh, handcuff. Handcuff. Alright, handcuff. Thou shalt not steal. Handcuff. Number eight. Number nine. <laughs> Don't bore false, false witness. Nine, right? Like a tongue, long tongue. Okay, nine, a long tongue. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Don't lie. Number 10, thou shalt not covet, right? 10, you have 10 handphones already. Why do you want some more? All right, 10, enough already. Thou shalt not covet, okay? This I help you to remember. Next week we come, I will ask especially the new people. Okay, let's pray.